I make myself a cup of chai every morning. While drinking chai, I think about research and challenges. In the morning, one day, my chai took me in the past when I was doing postdoctoral research at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. Dr. Samay Jain, University of Pittsburgh Medical Center from Neurology Department, approached me with a question. Can we use modern wearable technology for the treatment of Parkinson's disease? I reacted with a counter question. What is Parkinson's disease? And he explained in detail. So Parkinson's disease is a movement disorder. It brings tremor, rigidity, and slowness of movement. It is very difficult for these patients to live life normally like we do. It is difficult for them to hold a pen or write a check or walk properly or drive a car. Moreover, they need to visit hospital often to check if the medication plan is working or not. So Dr. Jane and I came up with an idea. If we can use smartwatch to collect the data when they are back home. But in order to execute this idea, we have to validate this particular uh, idea. So we brought 24 patients in his clinic and collected data. And we analyzed the data for about a year or two. During this period, we were more convinced that smartwatch is not made for Parkinson's disease treatment. It is good in general. By the way, Samay Jain is not in this world today. He passed in late 2016. I learned a lot from him. He was a great man. Coming back to the present moment, still holding chai in my hand, and thinking about what can I do next. And chai took me back in the past again. This time it was my childhood. I grew up in India, the, the small city, Drangadra, in the state of Gujarat. Back in 1990s, the life was so simple. I enjoyed playing cricket. In fact, I enjoyed playing cricket so much that uh, I used to like leading a team as a captain. And that involved cooperation, teamwork, and skill placement. One more thing I liked is hanging out in the market street. Over there, we own a shop. It's a clothes shop. My father and uncle still sell clothes today. I used to be a helper in the background. My job was to bring textile material from storage to the counter and counter to the storage. It was a great childhood experience, and I used to play with textile when customers are not around. Later, I developed a tremendous interest in biomedical engineering during my undergraduate education. That took me to the beautiful city of Lübeck in Germany. Over there, I designed smart textile belt made of metallic textile electrodes, capturing electrocardiogram when patients are sitting at home. This particular project was recognized by Systex, one of the European Union funded programs on smart textile. I brought this enthusiasm to the University of Rhode Island, and I created the wearable biosensing lab. Again, coming back to my present moment, drinking chai, thinking about all of these things, about my past experiences. And I'm, I'm just something clicked in my mind that I have played with textile in my childhood. I have created smart textile during my PhD. Can I bring something with smart textile for Parkinson's disease? So I designed smart gloves made of electrodes that goes onto fingers that can collect high resolution data. Let's see how smart gloves can help uh, people with Parkinson's disease. My name is Andrea Hopkins. I'm 71 years old. 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease 
Andrea uses an app on a tablet which connects to the smart glove wirelessly. After the connection is successfully established, the app guides her to perform specific movement tasks. The smart glove has several high-resolution stretch sensors which can pick up fine-grained symptoms present in the hand and fingers. The glove data is sent to the tablet for storage and analysis. Since the smart glove app is connected to the internet, physicians can see the progress remotely. The smart glove could potentially reduce the number of clinical visits for patients in the future. There's no cure for Parkinson's, but medications do address the symptoms. And that's why sensors give the doctor critical information that helps to know whether or not the medications are working. Here, I would like to bring a demo. And I am wearing a gloves, which has a highly resol uh, high resolution sensor. It is showing you a bar graph and how my finger is moving. This data eventually goes to doctor, and doctor can make informed decision. This particular project actually supported by National Science Foundation because it brings innovation in science. And I am very much thankful to NSF for advancing the science of smart textiles. So here is the data. What is the use of that? This data is available to doctors. And therefore, I went to Dr. Umar Akbar in Rhode Island Hospital when I told him about this particular project. He was overjoyed, and he joined this project to help how to uh, experiment with this particular textile. On top of that, I had to create an entire team with different skill set, spanning from engineering, computer science, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, app design, and textile design. Coming back, to my childhood experience, playing cricket. Now, I am feeling that I'm playing cricket on everyday basis, but with a different format. We all come with a different skill set, but we have learned how to coordinate with each other with this skill set. And then at the end, we design effective smart textile. This is my on-field team. And I also have an off-field off -field team back at home. My wife, my eight-year-old, girl and six-year-old boy. When I go back home in the evening, tired, they provide me un un unconditional love and support so I can work harder. What's the future of smart textile? It's a, one of the most advanced technology today. It's applications spanning from medicine to physiotherapy to sp sports and even many more things. However, we need to answer certain questions. How can we define manufacturing process for smart textile? How can we make them secure and safe when they are connected to internet? And how can we make them recyclable? Instead of throwing them in the garbage, can we make them recyclable or sustainable? Answers to these questions lie in how we educate young generation today. In order to do that, I have created a course on wearable Internet of Things that is based on creativity, design thinking, and innovation. And all of this bring together to design better wearable technology that is helpful. Students, when they come to my class on very first day, I tell them one thing. You are going to start a company right now for the next three to four months. Think about a product you want to bring it to the market. They would create a working prototype at the end of the semester, and then they walk out with a mindset of design thinking and entrepreneurial thinking. Fab Newport is an another great example from Rhode Island. They have designed a smart textile course for middle school students. Can you imagine that a middle school student is trained how to 
design smart textile projects. These young generations will be innovative, creative, and will have courage to convert their innovative ideas into realistic solutions to help today's global society. At last, I would like to say one thing. Life is an experiment. Keep designing your protocol while drinking your chai. Experiment brings unexpected results. Don't worry. I promise you, you will have an enjoyable journey. You will have fun. Thank you.